Well, good morning and welcome to the online service of Guysley Baptist Church. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. Now, I'm sure you don't need me to tell you today's Mothering Sunday, a day when uh, we would perhaps be traversing our communities or, or the country itself to, to meet up with loved ones. And, um, well, it seems it's the second year, isn't it? Now, when uh, many of us have just not been able to enjoy that, that close connection and embrace that we really want to. So Mother and Sunday, it's a difficult one, isn't it? Uh, maybe today it's a day of more quiet reflection than it has been before. And, um, and I suspect too that pandemic aside, uh, there will be folk too for whom Mother and Sunday is a difficult day a day of maybe distant memories or, or close memories or memories of disappointment and pain. So I want to say today that in this time that we have together this morning, we wish this to be a safe place, to be a place of welcome, a place where we can just relax, where we can bring our memories, our dreams, our hopes and our prayers before our God who cares for us, who shows mercy and wants to comfort us. Uh, it, it was Isaiah, the, the Old Testament prophet, who said that God is a mother to us, comforting and carrying us in our arms. So today, it's a day when we honour what motherhood means. It's a day when we give thanks for mothers. It's a day where we also give thanks for that mother-like nurture that many show sacrificially into the lives of the people around them. And we do that all in the context of a loving and a, and a giving and a warm and a caring God. And I'm reminded of Psalm 71. It says that God alone is our refuge. God alone is our hope. God is our, our shelter and our protection. From our very first breath to our last, that God's love and God's compassion never fails. So come. Come and lift your voices in praise to God today. Bear witness to God's acts of mercy and love. Proclaim God's glory to all who will listen. So let's, let's worship God together. Come set your rule and reign In our hearts again Increase in us we pray Unveil why we're made Come set our hearts ablaze We hope like wildfire in our very souls Holy Spirit come invade us now We are your church We need your power in us
Um, this Mothering Sunday, I'm thankful for my life that I'm here to celebrate with my family. I'm grateful for my children, that they're healthy. I'm grateful also that they're back in school and we made it through the period of homeschooling and lockdown. Um, so for me this year, it's all about gratitude. I have three daughters, two who live close by and one who lives in Lewis in the south of England. This year, Mothering Sunday won't be the same as we won't be able to get together with our two daughters who live close by um, to share a meal together and, and all the fun that goes on around the table. But we can still love them from a distance. Maybe we'll have a one-to-one -one walk. We'll definitely Zoom time and maybe even a quiz later on. I thank God for each one of them and for their husbands and for our six lovely grandchildren and continue to pray for them that they would know God for themselves and I think this is a blessing and a privilege for a grandmother that I'm able to do this and as for those hugs I just can't wait. Mothering Sunday for me is all about celebrating great mums. So this year I will be celebrating my mum Barbara and my mum-in-law Joan. Great mums who have cared for me and taught me lots. Last year Mother's Day was on the 22nd of March, just before the first lockdown. And we, even then we were being encouraged to keep our distance. I remember doing a garden visit for a cup of tea and a quick celebration which was chilly. This year, I'm really thankful that we've been able to form a bubble with my mum so we can celebrate in style. Happy Mother's Day, Mum. See you later. So for me, this year, <clears throat> Mother's Day um, makes me a little bit sad that um, I still haven't been able to see my mum. Um, but grateful that you know, I can still send flowers, I can still speak to her, um, that she has been kept safe um, over the last 18 months. Um, <clears throat> and I have the hope that you know once restrictions are lifted, with the benefits of, of vaccines and when borders are open, <clears throat> I can make that journey and see her. Um, I'm also, it's also made me reflect on my own relationship as a mum with my children and um, I'm really blessed that I do currently have a positive relationship with my children and um, that is a massive blessing and really appreciative because not everyone has that. I thought about it long and hard and in the end, I decided I could choose to focus on the depth of my disappointment that this is the second year I won't be able to enjoy the hugs and kisses 
of my children and grandchildren. Or I could spend some time marveling at the wonder of a mother's love. I watch the tireless and devoted way a mother bird not only prepares the perfect nest, but then labours to satisfy the insatiable cries of feed and feed me from those wide open hungry mouths. I watch my neighbour struggling to bend down and pick up her baby because she's hurt her back, but never hesitating or rationing her maternal commitment. Or I could marvel at the overwhelming amount of nurturing love that I have received from my daughter, friends and neighbours after I broke my arm. And people showered me with cards, meals, flowers, offers of help and regular messages of caring and concern. It was my turn to be on the receiving end of the love that encourages and builds people up and helps them to thrive. So, this year, I'm thanking Father God for the power of love and the fact that we love because he first loved us. It's amazing that we get to share in the mothering heart of God. And even if it means that we have to use words instead of hugs and kisses again this year, we get to participate in that limitless, life-giving, sacrificial love from which we can never be separated, especially on Mothering Sunday in a time such as this. One memory of, our, of my mother was we were on a bus. I was asking questions as I usually did. Her patience with me was wonderful. When a lady got on and sat in front of us, she was wearing a hat. I said to my mum, I don't like that hat in a very loud voice. Mum gave me that glance that only my mum could. She did not have to spank or scold. That glance said to me, I have been very naughty and disrespectful. She turned round to the lady and said, I am awfully sorry. But the lady just brought out some sweets and gave them to me. I said I was very sorry. May you use those gifts that you have received and pass on the love given to you. May you be content knowing you are a child of God. Let his presence allow your soul freedom to sing, dance and turn to the song. For all mothers who are still with us, and for those who have gone to be with Jesus, we give thanks today. For all those who mothered us, some in addition to our own mothers, and some in place of absent mothers, we recognise you and give thanks to you. For all women who have been figures of grace and love in our lives, your example has been meaningful to us. And during this time of physical distance, we wish we could be nearer to our mothers as they do to us. So we pray that this day brings lots of phone calls and cards and love and light to your way. Mothers and mothering women, we love you. Who flowers? 
Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre. He entered the house and did not want anyone to know it, yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an impure spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, born in Syrian Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter. First, let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Lord, she replied, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he told her, for such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. She went home and found her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of the Decapolis. There some people brought him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk and they begged Jesus to place his hand on him. After he took him aside away from the crowd Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears and then he spat and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Ephathatha, which means be opened. At this the man's ears were opened and his tongue was loosed and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement he has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you to Elaine and Gordon for reading today's passage. This morning, as it's Mother's Day, I'm going to focus on the part of the passage that Elaine read. It's a difficult passage, isn't it? It's a story that raises questions about everything we think we know about Jesus. And what do we know? A perfect God made human without sin. Jesus, the light of the world, the way, the truth and the life. Jesus, who many of us have committed our lives to following and serving. Jesus, who called us to love one another, to love our neighbour as ourselves. But this same Jesus appears in this passage to be using horrible language of prejudice and put downs towards a desperate fellow human, a sincere foreign woman who's come to him for help. The Jesus we see here appears totally insensitive to her situation and even goes so far as to publicly insult her. This week, following the broadcast of a certain interview, there's been a lot of discussion around the subject of racism and whether or not, or to what extent, racism exists in our country and our culture. Now, whatever your views may be on the interview, one thing I'm sure we can all agree on 
is that as Christians, we believe that all humans have been created in the image of God, all equally worthy of dignity and respect. And we would all strongly agree with Paul's words in Galatians 3.28 that there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And this belief in the value of all human beings, humans created in God's image, is one of the key foundations of our faith. So what on earth is going on in this passage? Elaine read from the account from Mark's Gospel. If you read Matthew 15 verses 21 to 28, you'll find basically the same story there, though Matthew's account has a little bit more detail. Jesus had gone to Tyre, not on a preaching or healing mission, but to have some time out, some rest and recuperation. He needed a break. Mark has this event following Jesus teaching his disciples about being clean and unclean and how it's what comes out of your mouth that's the problem, not what you eat or drink. So Jesus had already been challenging the protective fence that had been placed around Jewish identity, these purity laws, and he'd been saying some quite risky things. And so here he was now trying to hide, trying to lie low in a Gentile town, not wanting to draw attention to himself. So let's picture the scene. Jesus is trying to get away from it all. His disciples are trying to protect him. Then this lady turns up. We get the impression that she was quite determined. She'd sought Jesus out and nothing was going to stop her from getting to him. In Matthew 15, we read that the disciples were a bit irritated by her and they urged Jesus to send her away. When she pleads with Jesus for help, he, he's initially silent. And that would have been seen as entirely appropriate by those witnessing the encounter. Jesus was endorsing the view that the disciples would have been comfortable with, that, um, that this woman wasn't really worth paying any attention to. So like at other times, the, the disciples assume that Jesus has no time for this lady. She doesn't appear to be behaving respectfully. She even throws herself at Jesus' feet at one point. Now, even today in the Middle East, in conservative areas, men and women don't talk to strangers across the gender barrier. And in those days, rabbis didn't even talk to women in their own family in public. So the disciples urge Jesus to send her away. But then, shockingly, Jesus starts talking to her. He starts a dialogue with her. And that would have been really unexpected. Jesus replies to her plea for help by answering. Um, and, and, and it's something that's a, um, this causes a lot of confusion. His answer, he says, it's not fair to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Now, the word he actually uses in the original language um, for dogs is little dogs. But in our English version, we just see the word dogs. So, so this conversation isn't private. The disciples are there watching and they're listening intently. And Jesus knows exactly what the disciples are thinking. He knows that Jews often referred to Gentiles as dogs, though the Gentiles also had some very strong insults for Jews. So Jesus was aware of this mutual hatred of each other. And knowing what they're thinking he takes this thought process to its full conclusion. So though he's accurate about what they're thinking and feeling, when it's put into words, it's actually quite shocking. And especially when it's thrown back in the face of a desperate kneeling woman who's pleading for her daughter to be healed. Now in Matthew's account, Jesus says that his mission is to the lost sheep of Israel. And we do know that it wasn't until after the resurrection that the good news was then shared more widely beyond Israel's borders. But here Jesus is holding up a mirror to the prejudice of his disciples. They, they would have been watching him very closely. So this conversation with, with the woman isn't just for her benefit. It's for the benefit of the disciples as well. And how does this lady respond um, you might think that she would return the insult. 
But her response is actually brilliant. She says, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. In, in the original language, again, she actually says, even the little dogs under the table eat the children's little crumbs. So her confidence and tenacity are incredible. Instead of returning the insult, she accepts the insult. She adds a bit of humour to her response and, and basically she repeats her request quite confidently. And Jesus answers her, for such a reply you may go. In Matthew's version, he says, a woman great is your faith. She's passed the test. So this woman with total confidence in Jesus, with a fierce protective love for her child, she challenges every prejudice the disciples have about women and Gentiles. And she forces them to reevaluate who God is and to whom God extends his love. She gets it. She really believes that Jesus can heal her daughter. And she understands how God chose Israel for the sake of the world. So she sees way beyond the present to the future. And this is the great faith that Jesus commends her for. So today, Mother's Day, is traditionally a day when we acknowledge incredible women. We all know women like this one in the passage, don't we? Women who perhaps have children facing particular challenges with health or education. But you know that you should never get in their way when they're fighting for their kids because they can be really scary. Now, Jesus broke down the barriers of gender and race and he held up this lady who didn't really meet any of the criteria as an example, a woman of great faith. And it's not the only time Jesus praises a woman for her faith. There are, there are a number of accounts in the Gospels where Jesus commends women, where he holds them up as great examples of faith. Now, recently, there have been a number of stories in the news about Christian leaders who've fallen short of the standards that even they themselves have taught. And I know many people who've been hurt and disappointed as a result of these revelations. I think this passage serves as a reminder to us that sometimes the great examples of true faith can be found in the places we least expect to find them. So those we may be keen to dismiss and send away, those who make us feel uncomfortable, those we assume God can never use because they're not like us. They don't wear the same badges of faith as us. They don't have the same history. So I think one challenge for us this morning could be to look around and ask, who are the great examples of faith in our lives, in our communities? Those we may previously have overlooked. What can we, what can we learn from them? What does God want to say to us through them? And what about us? What about our faith? Are we an example to others through our boldness and determination, our refusal to give up when things get tough, the way we press in and keep on asking and keep on petitioning, believing in a God who can redeem all people and all situations? Are we an example of faith that others can look to and, and imitate? So let's pray. Loving God, thank you that these actual stories about seemingly insignificant people and situations were recorded and that we have such brilliant examples and role models. Thank you for those in our own lives, in our families, in our churches, in our communities who have also been key in our faith journey. Would you teach us to recognise treasure in unexpected places and might we be a blessing to others. Amen.
Almighty Lord, Heavenly Father, Mother in God. Beyond our understanding, yet from deep within our hearts, we cry out to you. As your beloved children, we bring before you all that we are. Sorrow, pain, hope and joy. Compassionate God, console those denied the chance to celebrate Mother's Day the abandoned, the separated, the disappointed, bring us all together as your family of faith. Sustain those who mourn loved ones, for whom today is a day of grief. Comfort us with the wellspring of, your, of our memories. Unifying God, inspire us to advocate for peace and guide us to see the part we play in creating harmony in this world. Reconcile us to each other, that we may embody your forgiveness and live as one. Bountiful God, kindle in us a celebration of the diversity of all families, of all shapes and sizes and all backgrounds and faiths. Teach us to grow in compassion and understanding remembering that even with our differences, we are all your children. Nurturing God, encourage us to share in the joy and effort of making healthy, peaceful communities. Open our hearts to reach out to our neighbours in charity and acceptance. Mothering God, beyond our understanding, yet from deep within our hearts, we reach up to you. Take us up in your arms and heal us. Bend down to us and feed us. Wrap us in your bands of love. Glory be to you, O Lord. Your comfort and care knows no bounds. May we rest in your abundant love, which nurtures us from age to age. Amen.
So our service is coming to a close now. So thank you for being with us this morning. And thank you again to the, the many who participated and contributed to our service this morning. We really do appreciate the words and the prayers, the thoughts that you shared with us this morning. I trust this morning that it has been a good place for us uh, in our isolated times on this difficult day that we have heard the voice of God and maybe the comfort and the blessing of God. And, you know, and if you would like to speak to, to Jill or myself, we'd be delighted to speak to you. Uh, we could even meet outdoors on a bench and have a cup of coffee now. Hallelujah. Uh, so uh, the contact details will be at the end of the service as normal. And uh, we'd be delighted to, to hear how you came across this service this morning and if we can uh, pray for you and help you in your, in your, your journey with Christ. Uh, let me share these words, some beautiful words, which are just a, a, a paraphrase of Psalm 121. Let me read these. For those who have watched over me, for those who have protected me, and for those who have shielded me, thanks be to the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And for the roof that shades me from the sun, from the walls that shield me from the storm, from the bed that warms me in the night. Thanks be to the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And to the one who keeps me from evil, the one who preserves my life, the one who watches over my coming and going. Thanks be to the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Amen.